Welcome back, Nagios community. Benjamin here, and I'm excited to show you how to use XI's powerful configuration wizards and how to start monitoring hosts and services in just a few clicks. If you've just installed Nagios XI, you're ready to go. If this is your first time in XI after install, welcome. We'll look around real quick. On the left, we got home and we got views, dashboards, reports, the config menu, help, tools, admin, enterprise, and account. Uh, we also have some quick uh, menu buttons down here at the bottom, like running a wizard, which we'll do in a minute. And we have some account settings and notification settings. I'll jump into notifications in another video. We also have some popular wizards here at the bottom. To access configuration wizards, there's a few different ways. You can search in the top right search bar and type in wizard. Or you can go over to the left menu icon and click config configuration wizards. On this screen, you can see hundreds of configuration wizards designed to help you monitor almost anything you can imagine in just a few clicks. There's a lot to choose from. You got OpenAI and Microsoft and Docker and Oracle. There's so much to see. So take some time and search for what you're interested in. For now, we're going to monitor a Windows machine using the Nagios Cross-Platform Agent or NCPA. So I'm going to type in NCPA and it's going to pull up relevant results here. And I have the NCPA wizard here. And down here, I have a Windows desktop or Windows server wizard. Those also use NCPA. The three of them are essentially identical. So I'll click the NCPA wizard. Now, before you monitor anything like a Windows or Linux box using NCPA, you need to deploy the agent on that box. Um, the core services platform download includes an executable file. So you can actually open that on Windows and it'll install the agent for you. Now, whatever method you choose on, whether it's the executable file on Windows or you install it manually on Linux, uh, you will set a password that will help you access that agent. So for this machine, I'm going to type in my IP address right here for that machine. I'm going to leave my port the default, enter my secret token that I configured when I installed the agent, and I uh, will select the system as Windows, and we'll click Next. Nagios XI will then reach out to that device and connect with the agent. The agent will tell Nagios XI all the different metrics that are available to monitor on that device. But first, we want to give this device a helpful name so we remember it when we see it in our menus. All right, we'll give it a name. And then we'll choose our metrics. We have everything from system metrics like CPU usage and user count, so you know how many users are logged in at any one time. Uh, to memory metrics and disk metrics. You can also change these defaults if you have a different kind of configuration you want to monitor for. Also, you can monitor running services and processes. So you can go through this menu. There's a lot to choose from. You can choose one or multiple. Same with processes. You can choose from one or multiple processes that are running as well or not running if you want to make sure that a process does not run. All right, we'll choose this. And uh, there's some other options here like Windows counters and plugins. We'll leave those for now and click Next. All right, on the monitoring settings page, uh, for all your different configuration lizards, it's going to ask you, you know, how often do you want to check these hosts and services? We'll leave the default now for five minutes. And then uh, just know that if it, the status changes at any time, it will recheck the host and services up to five times and see if the state changes back. If it doesn't, it'll send you a notification. I'll explain more about notifications in another video in the series. For now, we'll click Finish with Defaults. All right, the configuration changes have been successfully applied. We'll click View Status Details for this Windows desktop. All right, so here we can see the host name and then we can see all the different services that Nagios XI is now collecting data for to begin to give alerts. You'll be able to produce graphs over time and even reports. Let's monitor our website next. We'll click Run Another Monitoring Wizard and we'll type in Website. We'll click on Website Configuration Wizard. Well, let's monitor HTTPS colon slash slash www.nagios.org. And uh, we'll leave that host name there. That looks good. We'll use SSL. 
to the default port. Now we're gonna check for HTTP, ping, and DNS resolution. Um, we don't need to check for DNS IP match in this case, but if you want, you can always check for web content for a specific piece of content on that website. You can monitor for that. For SSL certificate, we'll click and see what the default's looking like. Okay, we'll leave it as the default and click next. Okay, we're back to the monitoring settings here. Once again, we'll leave it as the default. Check every five minutes and then recheck every one minute and then for five times. And then we'll click finish with defaults. And then that's getting set up now. Okay, great. We'll check the status details for this. We're monitoring nagios.org for these four services. The third item I'll monitor in this video is a generic network switch. We use it for testing here in the office. So to start with that, we'll go over to the config icon and select configuration wizards. And we'll search for generic. Click on generic network device wizard. And we'll type in our switch's IP address. And we'll click next and we'll give it a host name here. Call it test switch. And it's just a switch. So in this case, we only have ping to monitor. So we'll leave it at that and click next. All right, we're back to the monitoring settings page again. And we're gonna treat this as a critical piece of infrastructure. So we're gonna change our check frequency to every two minutes instead of five. I wanna know about this right away if there's a change in status. And we'll also, we'll recheck it every minute again, but only after two times, I want to get a notification. I want to know right away what's happening. So we'll leave that at two and then we will continue and click next. All right. So there's some more configurations here. You can choose this all looks good and we'll click finish with defaults. All right, it's successfully applied. Let's see what we have here at the home screen. All right, so our network switch is actually not connected to the network at the moment, so it's correct, it's down. So it's showing up here in the red. We'll just confirm that here. Our test switch is indeed down. That's what we're expecting in this case. And let's go check and see what is actually up. All right, so for our up hosts, we have the two we configured earlier in this video, plus a local host, which is the machine that Nagios XI is running on. That's set up by default. So let's check on here on this Windows desktop. Let's check on these services and see how the data is coming in. All right, great. We're getting data. Our, our swap usage is critical. Our memory usage is at a warning state, but everything else is looking great. Over time, this data will build up and then you can get graphs and see what the trends are. All right, let's check our website. I'll click on services and it's monitoring. Everything's looking okay. DNS, HTTP, that's good. And uh, let's go back to our, our test switch one more time. Yeah. All right, it's monitoring for ping and it's, it's critical because it's not there. All right, congrats. You've just used Configuration Wizards to monitor three different hosts and their services. Follow along on this next video and I'll walk you through how to configure notification settings to make sure that you're alerted when you're away from your system of critical changes in status. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions along this journey, definitely go to nagus.org, join the forum, and ask the community any questions you have. Also, subscribe to this YouTube channel so you get the best practice on how to monitor your IT infrastructure. Thanks again.